behind then cross it and bring the ends at the site of starting then we have to tie the knot over the not over the wound but side of the wound we have to tie the knot not at the sides of head because it cause disturbance in the sleeping of patient same we have to tie the square knot we have to hide the remaining ends and this way we will tie the bandage over the forehead नमस्कार वेलकम टू दिस सेशन एम एस डी जीरो टू थ्री सोशल इकोलॉजी ग्लोबलाइजेशन एंड सस्टेनेबिलिटी ऑफ द प्रोग्राम मास्टर ऑफ आर्ट्स एंड सस्टेनेबिलिटी साइंस इन द सेशन इन द सेशन सोशल इकोलॉजी ग्लोबलाइजेशन एंड सस्टेनेबिलिटी ए ब्रीफ ऑफ अ व्यू टुडे इन दिस सेशन वट वी आर गोइंग टू फोकस दिस ऑन you know as a student of sustainable science we have looked into different courses in first year and a second year also so in this context as a student of sustainable science what we are going to study right so we have this course msd 023 uh, social ecology globalization sustainability why we need to study this particular uh, course as we know that sustainability science is the study of interaction between nation and society this definition itself expresses that we need to understand social ecology uh, the present issues of globalization in the context of sustainability so let us have a look into why we need to study this course as you know the major objective of this particular course is on understanding and learning the clear concept of globalization social ecology interlinkages then as we know globalization is a process where we are i mean evidence from the last few centuries which it was interpreted in in different way so whether the process of globalization is as a means of livelihood or is livelihood asking for globalization or not and uh, even today in this era of globalization one or other issues are coming up in front of us at different level so what are the different pathways to sustainability transition these are the major objective of this blog when we are trying to understand social ecology what exactly social ecology is as we know that social ecology here in sorry <coughs> sorry <coughs> social ecology is you know in this diagram you will see this is the interwoven threads of a complex web of life when we try to understand the basic concept of sustainability science we understand this is the dynamic uh, studies of dynamic interaction between nation society here in this diagram you see in the left side is the nature and the other right side is society so it is the interaction between nation society in the form of give and take in the both ways what the nature is giving us is resources and society is taking as users right in the same way what the broader activities we are trying to maintain uh, the complex web of life of different system is and i mean we are giving to the nature system right here in this process of give and take up between nation society we will see how we are uh, continuing this process the process is because of human knowledge right human knowledge from since beginning if you look from different 
paradigm shift of uh, this uh, human evolution or human society, you will see knowledge is the driver to everything. And we follow uh, different practices to, I mean, nurture this nature to, I mean, to extract the resources from the society, uh, from the resources as society. In the same time, uh, the interaction between nation and society was maintained by form of informal form institution. In the same way, when we try to understand this interaction between nation and society, what we learn is what type of evolution is going on since the human civilization is because of technology, right? So our responsibility, of, uh, if you look from ecological concept, as a member of the earth community arises from <clears throat> both our relationship <clears throat> into this interwoven threads of a complex way of life. On earth and uh, from our place, it is unique from of nature's and it art, art itself also express its own expression. So we have to accept the responsibilities implied our role in nature becoming self-conscious, right? So we can uh, begin to reverse our presently anti-evolutionary because in the process of uh, in the process of self evolution of the uh, the complex web of life of the nature we do anti evolutionary processes by introducing technology in other approaches so and ecocidal direction ecocidal direction and uh, to market a more i mean way of i mean uh, a way of uh, the balance in a process of evolution, we begin to we need to begin a contribution to the continuation of this planetary uh, natural and social evolution. Okay, so we can also contribute, or we can also can cooperate with natural evolution through own self development. So to override all these ethical challenges which is in front of us, we, where we introduce in different form, form to imbalance this nature society interaction, uh, their need and overriding ethical challenge to humanity that are to determine how we can uh, uh, follow our own part of self-realization as a human community because we are part of the nature itself. At the same time, uh, we need to allow the entire art community to continue its process of cell manifestation and evolutionary unfolding. So, a crucial link between these two important aspects is that the understanding of how the flourishing of life, the interweave web of linkages of life, web of life uh, on earth is constitutive of the human good is we dialectically develop in relation to the as planetary as a whole. So the central aspect of the human good is what? The central aspect of human good is to enjoy and indeed celebrate the social, ecological, uniting diversity, the goodness of universe, right? At the same time, what is that goodness? Goodness that is most meaningful manifested for us in beauty, richness, diversity, and complexity of life on Earth. So as a social ecology, as a social ecology, if you look to this goodness, is a holistic vision that seeks to relate all phenomena to the largest direction of evolution as we, may, we understand the evolution, the human itself is a part of evolution and emergence in the universe as a whole, right? So within this context, you know, uh, it also needs to examine the course of planetary evolution as a movement to increasing towards increasing complexity, where we're trying to stop the planetary evolution by in, uh, introducing a number of technologies and so on, and diversity and uh, the progressive emergence of all this value. So a social ecology, as a social ecology, it should be interpreted as a planetary evolution and uh, the realization of social and ecological possibilities uh, as a holistic process rather than merely as a mechanism of adaptation, right? When we're talking about the social evolution, we thought that we are trying to evolve our sins as a part of adaptation, but exactly it should not be, it should be an opposite in the sense that our evolution of 
ourself and other organisms should be a part of evolution of the wholeness of the uh, that planet Earth. Here, in this context, uh, in this context, you will see different authors uh, interpret the evolution of society in uh, five uh, major, I mean, uh, uh, five uh, major stages. <clears throat> you know. The human society started as hunting hunter and gatherer. That's called a hunting society. The hunting society gives to an agrarian society so to settle ourselves, right? That evolve, right? Then this agrarian society asks for better way of life. That is industrial society. Then industrial society asks for another society we, where we can link it easily. That it comes into this globalization. It is also a process of globalization. That is information society. Today we are in the society 5.0. That is super smart society. We try to have anything, everything in our palm. So this is how the society is evolved. If you look into how the society is evolved, you know society itself is an interconnection of social systems, right? In a social system, you know, human enter into social relation in which they make meaning of each and the other, each other. We make meaning of each other. And uh, we practice, produce, and reproduce specific social structures. If you look into the evolution of society, you understand from agar agrarian to super smart society. You will see technology, evolution of society, and so on. So... In that way, we reproduce specific social structure. That structure enable and constrain individual thoughts, our individual thinking and individual action and further social practices that again produce and reproduce social structure and so on at infinitum. When you look into social, uh, when you look uh, when you look into evolution society, you will understand how technology play an important role, how an individual play an important role. So a social system, if you look here, is a dialectic of social practices and social structure that's clearly evidenced when we are trying to understand this evolution of societies, right, from starting from hunting uh, society to the super smart society, that is society 5.0, right. Then if you look into how this evolution society and how interaction of nature and society uh, uh, exists is, you know, it can be, it is because of the harmonious relation of the three major system, beginning from your global system. What is global system? The existing geosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere, and biosphere that give us our existence, the blue planet. If something is, you know, uh, something uh, uh, is happened to uh, this particular global system, it affects the entire system. In the same way, in this process, when we exist ourselves, the society itself reproduce our own political, economic, and industrial other s structure as a societal base into our existence to run the system. Right? Here, you know, human as an in individual play an important role. For example, and if we look into industrial society, if it when it comes from the agrarian society to industrial society, the individual intellectual play an important role. That in this time, you know, invention and discoveries was happen in that way industrial uh, that industrial evolution uh, comes. Right. So if you look into this uh, today's world, you will understand. You will understand. See here in this, uh, understand that is when I told. When there is a small mistake or uh, that small disturbance in any of the system, for example, either in geosphere or biosphere, that can affect the entire system. The human intervention into the nature and evolution that created our social structure, that created uh, another issues that today we are looking into global phenomenon of climate change, environmental degradation, and so on. Right. If you look into this interaction of these three important systems, you will see in the in, you will see there are two part, two important processes which maintain uh, the interaction between nature and society. In the same time, 
the social structure, the dynamism, evolution of social structure is happening, and uh, there is uh, dynamism in complexity of web of life is happening. Is one is production component where the uh, nature give us a product, give the product and consumption when human society is consuming it. So due to imbalances in this process, now we are having a lot of issues in front of us. Started from your environment and degradation to the global climate change, social issues and so on. That's why today we're talking about maintaining the global sustainability. That's why in the beginning I mentioned that when look into evolution processes, evolution of life should not be evolved or uh, evolution of societies should not be taken as an isolation. It should be part of evolution of the planet Earth, the wholesomeness of evolution. Okay? Again, if you look, what are the impact, how, how we are bringing from uh, your agricultural society, means hunter-gatherer to the smart, super smart society file. This is because of the introduction of human advanced knowledge called development process. Here you will find out what are, how development, self-face development uh, processes was happen, right? From the beginning of civilization, you know, we have, human have their own culture, right? The culture is set by the environment, okay? You will understand that entire the globe, every, because of the uh, diversity in land from, or there are a lot of uh, that culture, uh, uh, diversity learned from cultural diversities over there, across the world. So diversity is very high. That shows that the person living in a mountain area, their culture in any form, it may be social culture, it may be food habit, it may be any of the uh, any of the day-to-day -day activities, totally different from a uh, person who are living in the uh, seaside, right? So this culture is set by the environment, right? In the same time. The environment is also set by the culture. See, for example, in India, before colonialism comes, what has happened? Our own culture, our system was there. That was set by the, our own environment system about because of our um, the, uh, great mountain chains and diversity in our landform, diversity in geographical diversity. But when colonialism comes, the colonialism brings us influence to our environment, our culture. The British culture, the Western culture was introduced in our system and uh, we, it has an impact to the environment. This is how culture environment. That is, in that way you will see that interpretation is really the reality. This is exactly what is happening across the world. That's why we need to understand the interaction of these two important that, uh, that's, uh, system. One is human system, nature system in a dynamic way. And we have to understand this from a holistic approach. That's why there is need to understand the process of globalization. Okay, you should not think that globalization was happened in few years back only, few centuries back only. It is a natural process of evolution of the entire humanity. If you understand from how our uh, this uh, hunter gatherer to the smart five uh, society has come up in this process. Well, while you are trying to understand this process, we'll be able to understand globalization is a process in one side. In the same time, you know, it has also some limitation. But in short, we have to understand globalization is a process of evolution of the planet and evolution of the society. Okay? Okay? Uh, so we need to understand when different problem, different as I mentioned about this, uh, this uh, that uh, the technology we are utilizing for good sake has created another issues. There are some impact of this evolution uh, that asks for a sustainable planet, right? So there is a need to understand uh, and that we need to have a transition. It's a snap. What kind of transition? It's a snappy trans transition.
No, sustainable transition then is not, if you look uh, from uh, that uh, uh, ecological perspective, it's not no longer means only the identification of and the subordination uh, to ecological limits and imperative, but it is, uh, it is, and you know, it is uh, and uh, inherently open, you know, inherently uh, an open principle that frames debate on the kind of what kind of nature and society we wish to have. That is, we are able to understand when we are trying to understand the evolution of society. As we know, people are more than ever well aware about the social and ecological Im implication of our, of our own lifestyle. But we are not ready to give up the lifestyle which have a direct negative impact to the society, negative impact to the other component, negative impact to the evolution of the planet, evolution of the social structure, which first we need to emancipate about that. We need to understand what the meanings of uh, this um, modernity. So sustainability transition can be regarded as multidimensional and co-evolutionary processes that involve changes in technology. Because as you know from when we try to understand as I repeatedly uh, I mean using the term evolution of society, this is technology that evolves society. As a user, for how we are practicing that is also important. The business models, what kind of business models we are bringing. The policies, governance, approaches, and the cultural meanings of that. Okay, so this transition process consequently involve long-term fundamental change in societal system towards more sustainable modes of production, consumption, and of course, you know, living. Here you will understand modes of production and consumption in trailing cases. So whatever happening is because of this particular two component, the production versus consumption, right? So uh, under the un, under this backdrop, <clears throat> under this backdrop, the core social, ecology, globalization, and sustainability, the framework of its discourses was developed. And as we know, we need to understand how it is happening, why we need to have and look the social evolution as a part of planetary evolution. We need to have an uh, understanding in depth. That's why in this course, the course is divided into four major block. Block one is on introduction to social ecology and globalization, where, and block two is on globalization, livelihood, three is on democracy, social ecology, and public, uh, public, and the fourth block, four, uh, block four is on globalization and sustainability. In the block one, we are trying to understand and we are trying to learn about the basic concept as a student of sustainability on social ecology and the human ecology, how it is interrelated and how the global social change has to be studied and the role of, you know, uh, the role of uh, that, uh, that uh, tribal ecology, traditional ecolo uh, ecological knowledge in building up social ecology as a value. Of course, political ecology is very much important to understand the process of evolution of the planet, evolution of society, and uh, you know we have limits to the growth and social ecology that needs to be understand. That's why introduction to social ecology and globalization, our basic objective is to understand the basic concept of social ecology, global social change, political ecology, etc. And block two. Our message focus will be on understanding on the history of globalization. As I mentioned in the beginning, globalization, you should not think it was started a few years back only. Globalization is a process of evolution of the interplanet. You should understand globalization as a wholesome needs of evolution of planet in society. Then uh, in this particular blog, we are trying to explore more on the impact of globalization to the livelihoods. In the same time, how livelihood have play an important role in bringing up 
bringing the globalization at local level and the different index of global globalization. At the same time, uh, there is a need to understand natural society technology interaction uh, from the perspective lens of globalization. Block three, you know, after we have an understanding about the basic concept of social ecology and globalization and in that, uh, that understanding about globalization and livelihood, here public participation is very much important. Right. So in block three, our basic understanding is how public has to be participated and what kind of technology has to be understand uh, in the process of or in implementing sustainability in this era of globalization. So this will have four unit. First unit will talk on sustainability transition and socio-technical transition, how technology play an important role in bringing a sustainability transition. Then, you know, we have formal and informal transition which play an important role in bringing and sapping the nature society interaction where we, uh, this is a time to understand how these uh, socio-institutional and socio-economic needs to be understood and what kind of transitions need to have in this globalized world. At the same time, is, uh, we know that there is a close relation, uh, uh, there is a close relation and uh, the platform where social evolution is happening, the uh, evolution, planetary evolution happening is uh, that socio-ecological interaction so what kind of socio-ecological transformation is, impo uh, is going to, uh, is important in this globalized world we're going to study in this unit three. Of course, science policy institution and collective action is very much important where we are going to learn about how to link science to policy and how to link science to institution and collective action in bringing this sustainability transition in the sphere of social ecology as a part of that planetary evolution where we are going to explore in this unit. In block number four, we have specific, the major focus will be on globalization sustainability. We know globalization is a process, but if you look into dif uh, from different perspective, it has advantage and limitation. Here we have to understand, but in the same time, we have to appreciate the globalization from the lens of sustainability again. Also in this blog, it has uh, four units that focuses on globalization international business. As I told you, it is social ecology, uh, that uh, social evolution uh, takes place uh, towards the direction of globalization, right? Then, you know, when you talk about globalization, its impact, uh, the, its impact is on, uh, as you know, a different scale. Uh, but in some, I mean, very sensitive area or sensitive uh, ecosystem, uh, it has negative impact, I mean, I mean limited um, uh, uh, that, uh, advantages. Uh, so in that way, we are trying to understand through uh, this unit of environmentalism, resource environmental justice about globalization, then global economy, global trade and economy at last, at the end of the, uh, block for we are trying to bring globalization uh, in the lens of sustainable development, sustainable development in the lens of globalization. So to the initiation, what we are trying to understand is why we need to have this particular course, MSD 023, Social Ecology, Globalization, Sustainability. We have a quick look into the basic foundation of the reason why we need to study this course is student of sustainability science. I'm sure in uh, study material and uh, in differentiation uh, going to uh, come in this Gyan Dawson, you will explore more on that with this. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much.
Do you wish to be part of a television studio like this or any other media system? Or already part of any media system want to enhance a new set of skills? Welcome to School of Journalism and New Media Studies. Here in the School of Journalism and New Media Studies, we are offering program for all set of people to learn and enhance their media skills. The vision of School of Journalism and New Media Studies is to generate a new set of professionals in the area of media and communication studies with understanding about role of media in the national development and global understanding. We offer innovative programs in the field of journalism and mass communication that sets a benchmark of high quality learning and teaching process at the national level. We offer these programs across the country with the help of our regional network as well as study center. Same manner, many of our programs are offered through online mode with a sophisticated learning management system. SOJNMS offers programs from PhD in journalism and mass communication till certificate level. We have masters in journalism and mass communication. The eligibility is bachelor's degree. And we are introducing this program in three languages, Hindi, Tamil, and English. Students from national and international students can join either through online mode as well as in the distance mode. We have four postgraduate diploma programs, specialized areas in the field of development communication, digital media, electronic media, and journalism and mass communication program. And all these four programs are available in distance mode. Two programs are available in online mode, development communication, and digital media. And we have specialized certificate program in community radio. IGNO employs various media and communication tools for better teaching and learning process. School of Journalism and New Media Studies utilizes this media system for delivering all our programs. Come and join with us for exploring a new career and enhance your media skills. Dear learners, welcome to live teleconferencing session. This is Dr. A. Santamil Kanal from the Faculty of Public Administration, School of Social Sciences, Indira Gandhi National Open University. In this session, we will discuss about models of policy making. You know, in the models of policy making, there are various models are there, like for example, Estonian model, Vickers analysis model, group theory, uh, incrementalism, drawer optimum model, and uh, Herbert Simon bounded rationality model. So there are there are various models are there. Uh, in this session, we will discuss about three important models there. So before going into that. Why we need to study model, uh, theory, or approaches? You know, we have studied a lot in the public administration. Or any discipline, we always used to say about the models, the theories, and approaches. So, what is the usage of models? Why we needed that? You know, normally if you see the models and approaches and the theories and framework, it used to simplifying the complexity. Okay? Actually, you know, it... the. Uh, it, uh, they used to simplifying the complexity issues and uh, it will give you a visualization, visualization, okay. It will give the flow chart and diagram. You can visualize the pro problems and it will give these models, you know, that it will give the scenario analysis, how it happened earlier. And it, it used to give the explanation, it used to give the predictive power and it used to do the comparative analysis and uh, it used to give the methodological 
compliance yes also and uh, it used to give a certain kind of perspective or focus or sometime you used to say interdisciplinary insights so these models theories and approaches it's not only you know that it will help uh, only in the discipline so it it used to help everywhere okay you, you can compare the uh, like for example if you buy any item we used to compare with the others so likewise you know the models these theories and approaches will help to predictive okay and moreover it's a kind of a tool in if you come into that uh, the public policy it's a kind of a tool understanding of public policy in a uh, and it used to simplify the complex uh, concepts also it used to offer explanations and it used to provide the predictions and comparative insights and it used to guide and uh, how to analyze the policy and how to read the policy so these are the things also used to be there like for example you can know that time series analysis you no know, various techniques also there so these theories used to be helps to understand the predictive nature mostly you know that it used to provide the hypothesis about the cause and consequences of public policy it 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 always used to uh, not only identified the significant aspect but also it used to provide the uh, irrelevant variables you know that uh, and also the usefulness of the approach is to ability to order and simplify political life and moreover these are the models will help you to understand what is relevant and what kind of worth is a public policy or not so towards this in this session we will discuss about three uh, models of public policy analysis in that first one is this estonian model of policy analysis this policy making process is regarded as the black box because why it is called the black box means it converts the demands of the society into the policies okay normally as a student of public administration what will we do why the first public policy used to be created the public policy used to create based upon the need need of the people need of the society need of the community or need of the country it varies from uh, situation to situation so based on the need only they convert the demands into policy as the same way that uh, you know that estonian model they are saying that policy making progress process is regarded as the black box model and also he argued that a, a political system is a a uh, part of the society okay which is engaged in the authoritative allocations of values and uh, you know that uh, if you look into that politics means it's not only about the politicians okay which you know that politics of uh, is a part of the society which engage in each and every value like for example if you take in into that uh, see the diagram in the estonian black box model in that you can see that environment in the environment you can see three things are there one is the social variable political variable and economic variable in that uh, what happened that inputs inputs uh, goes into the black box and the blind the black box it came out as a output like if you see the down there is a one arrow line that is a feedback based on the output feedback from the policies then again it will go as a input like for example you can take that in the inputs you can say demands what are the demands are there from the public and what are the existing resources are there and how do we get the support whether it is a financial aid whether it's a non financial aid and we have a pressure groups i can say or otherwise opposition so once it goes to the black box black box in the sense like structures procedures policy maker structure is like that you can say government and procedure is rules and regulation or constitution and the policy making framework they used to do the they to happen in the parliament so in the black box it goes as a policies like a goods it's a services or otherwise a symbols for that so based upon the once you have created the policy so what will happen it will uh, like for example sometime you will get a positive impact sometime you to get negative impact and uh, so whether it is a positive or negative it goes as a feedback to the again as a input only so here you have to see that inputs are viewed as the physical social economic political products of the environment which are received into the political system in the forms of demands supports and apathy like here what do you mean by demands 
mostly demands used to arise from the public and the interest group uh, from uh, from the inputs like for example if you where used to the where is the demand used to come the demand used to come from the public and or otherwise you can say that pressure group or interest group like for example if you look into that why we have a created a new educational policy already we have a existing policies are there but what happened so why we have created a new education policy and another thing you can see that what is the need for right to information right to information mostly it happened due to the interest groups non governmental organization it is a pressure group so these mostly the demands used to arise from the public and mostly the demands mostly used to happen in the political system whether they are the individuals or group so these used to flow from the environment mediated through the input channels because of the demands only and the environment here environment it in the sense it doesn't mean that it is you know that trees and that like that it is a kind of a condition or otherwise you can say the external variable like for example environment means when in a social science we used to say what is the social condition what is the economic condition what is the political condition so these are the environments used to determine the uh, shape the public policy or deliver the public policy either the successful or failure of the public policy like in the environment you can say that uh, uh, physical social uh, economic and political variables mostly these variable used to uh, ex- internal and external environment of the political system so another one is that supports support in the sense like for example uh, these consist of like for example rules laws customs that provide a basic existence of the political community and the authority so when you are uh, when, when you are making a public policy it used to always supported by the rules laws and customs from the political community and the authority and also the support rendered from the individuals and the group has to accept the decisions or law so it can it 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 create a psychological and symbolic or material inputs of the political system like another one is that with inputs with inputs is a, like we can say it is a black box in the black box you can say that it is structure procedure policy maker so policy in the <coughs> policy conversion process you know that how the demands in converts into to the policy okay it would be uh, happened in the black box only with the support of structure procedures and policy maker like for example they all of them used to involve translating inputs into the policy output and if you look into that political science versions black box is the crowded with the personal than it institutions that can be called decision maker like for example personal in the sense you can say that bureaucracy or uh, you can say the uh, politicians in the parliament and they are the people used to do the decision maker so that's why it is called the uh, policy black box is crowded with the personal and and institution that can be called the decision makers and final thing is the output like uh, the goods uh, services and symbol for the uh, for public and other policy makers these are the authoritative and value allocations of the political system mostly these allocations constituted by the public policy or policies so the what the system theory used to say is that it portrays public policy as a output of the political system policy outputs may generate new demands and sometime what will happen new supports and withdrawal of the old support for the system like for example if you look into that previous go- uh, in our uh, political system also some policies government like they won't accept that only sometimes they you know that these are the things used to happen so when you are providing a new policies we used, used to get the support also we used to get agitation also we used to get against also so based on that the government used to change according to the nature of the political system and, and the final one is that the feedback so feedback is the most important one like uh, uh, how do you know that whether the public policy is successful or n- failure if it is a successful then okay if it is a failure or if you want to not it's a failure it is a wrong word if 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 we need any changes in the public policy it used to be attributed by the feedback mechanism only like for example you can say that earlier any social science any you know that uh, public policy program it used to <coughs> sorry distributed by the uh, money 
now they changed it into the they are depositing directly to the uh, bank and they are directly depositing to the aadhar so these are the changes how it has happened is the based upon the feedback mechanism only so such mechanisms are the, the how do they collect it is that they used to collect and analysis the data regard to the impact of the outputs so always feedback plays an important role uh, in generating suitable environment for the future policy also so the concept of feedback indicates that public policy may be a modifying effect of the environment and sometime in though demand generator therein itself also so Uh, based upon the this framework we have seen that environmental social political economic variable uh, this it was dominated uh, the field from the 1960s onwards from the combination of stages approach so most of the time it used to be supported by the were majority you know majorly it used to be supported by the ross well simon and eastern approaches to decision making policy and all like uh, david easton and other system theories have argued that public policy system is the product of the system influenced by the environment in which it to operates like that is used to be there mostly if you have a stable political economic and uh, <coughs> political social and economic environment normally it used to be the system also work very well so environment is used to be the determine the features also so the system approach is useful in understanding the policy making process and all. if you take it to them the major features of black box model so what will happen that it is the inputs in the form of flows from the environment and mediated through the various channel like individual pressure group political parties and the demands from the within the political system they used to convert into the laws and services and it used to commit as a uh, Uh, like a policies only so these are the basic features about the david easton uh, that you can say that uh, david easton approaches to policy analysis so each and every policies if you look into that there was a positive aspects also negative aspects also like for example damas die in 1980 he has suggested that if you read the david uh, easton's decision making or policies you will understand the all these questions like what are the questions so if you know this model you can understand any particular policy about what are the significant dimension of the environment and how that generate demands from the political system and <coughs> what are the general characteristics of the political system you know that uh, enable it to, to transform demands into public policy and preserve itself over time and how do environmental inputs affect the character of your political system how how do characteristics of the political system affect the content of the public policy and how do environmental inputs affect the content of the public policy and how does the public policy affect through feedback the environment and the character of the political system like for example feedback mechanism you can say that uh, uh what you say that like for example if you look into that new education policy new health policy so whatever the policy used to come they, they used to that give a advertisement through the new various newspaper and used to ask the suggestion from the public so based on that suggestion they used to add into that and you know that pressures used to come from the public also interest groups also and various political parties also these things used to convert into the public policy and all so mostly that if you see the major you know that um, Uh, criticism of estonian model is that uh, it used to convert the political uh, it used to convert in say actually black box actually you know that the black box in the sense it is a nobody knows the actual working of the system are unclear that's what it used to consider that that when it goes to the system so nobody knows about the how it works okay so the traditional input output model mostly you used to uh, ignore the uh, black box model the traditional input output model in the sense like for example you create a public policy and it will go to the public and again it will go to uh, come out of uh, you know experiences then again it will go to input so you know in between politics in that in the black box how the proces- process procedures and these are the things used to be normally hidden from that only and another thing that <coughs> 
sorry the model is uh, accused of implying value dating techniques like for example welfare economics like for example welfare economics in the sense social welfare some uh, functions and so mostly broadly policy analysis involves the application of model from the welfare economics model and also the system model ignores the important element of the public process that's what they say that like for example uh, 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 like for example that uh, traditional model of input output decision making model is a uh, facilitative and value free and irrespective of that cash wasteive but mostly that uh, old model is that it is a completely neutral structure but if you come to the to the black marks model that it's in the people said that it's not a value oriented and moreover they said that uh, uh, input output model are system model it used to be too simplistic and used to serve as a useful aid in understanding the policy making process and also so and mostly probably if you see in 1960 onwards there was a concept has been started between policy making policy output and the environmental problems and all uh, this happened in the 1960s onwards and another important model is that jeffrey wickers analysis of policy making so jeffrey wickers model you know that uh, uh, jeffrey wickers was a british british theorist uh, he has been uh, regarded as the one of the major contributor to the development of analyzing the policy making process his famous work is called the, the art of judgment uh, it is very important so it has less influence on the way public policy uh, approach involved uh, you know that wickers model addresses policy making as a complex activity in which values reality judgment are modified and adjusted and within which problems are never solved in the way goal setting conceptualization suggest and moreover his work always stresses that the importance of analyzing the interaction of the value judgment and reality judgment and represents the psychological cybernetic and the political ideas mostly most of his work you know that devoted to the analysis of judgment based on the uh, based in the terms uh, of like what is called appreciative behavior okay and he believed that social institutions are best analyzed in terms of systems published work made reaching contribution to systems thinking like for example in earlier model we have said that in the black box there is a procedures also there construction also there and the you know that how the structures process and the policy making so if you look into that in a micro level how the process you know that would be taken into the in a different level and the procedures and the how the process like for example if you look into the country like india length and breadth we vastly wider country okay like for example that some uh, policies are used to be suitable for the northern part some people uh, some policies are suitable for the southern part some policies were doesn't suit for the hill orient hilly uh, country hilly uh, state so this you know so it would be a very complex process it very difficult to understand for that you have to understand the how the you know that wickers uh, policies you have to understand the how the complex process is happening and all so moreover wickers always says that uh, a study of human regulations in an activity so modern so policy making based upon the it is a mental activity and the social process are indivisible mostly what he used to say that human systems are different from the mechanical system because they are informed by the appreciation and the art of judgment like for example in the era of artificial intelligence we mostly used to go by the data based decision making only but wickers is that what he says that human systems are different from the mechanical system mostly human system is to be uh, uh, suggest or suggest or you can say that whether the success or taking decision is mostly based upon the art of judgment only so the world is not only set of data but it is a construct uh, construct and mental artifact it art you can say that collective uh, collective works also so in analyzing this kind of a decision making process wickers framework emphasizes the importance of understanding the way 
constructs reality values and sets the context like for example which judgment are made in the action light of the reality and the value judgment and you can say that action judgment or judgments about what to do how to do and when to do and with what and by whom are to be understand as the outcome of interaction of the appreciation of reality and the values in that uh, vicar's uh, framework of our policy analysis there are four things are there analytical context uh, he has suggested four analytical dimensions in that which one is called mental activity institutional setting situational context and e uh, ecological context in the mental activity you know the mental activity if you look into that the first task is that to map the appropriate system involved in the decision so the analysis of the process involves understanding how the networks frame the mental artifact and which because why it is important here mental artifact is that it is to constitute the important dimensions of the policy maker so the next uh, aspect are we can say significant part are that you can say that key skills that prediction valuation and innovation so these are the your art of judgment is determined by the prediction valuation and the innovation and these are the very important uh, factor about the mental activity another one is the institutional settings institutional settings you know that it used to be examination of the institutional settings or you know appreciative setting institutional settings are that like for example how the uh, institutional framework or you can say that governance framework or either you can say that bureaucrats political system how they establish the institutions and the situational constraint situational context is more important because it is to mostly based upon the context of ideas and the events only and finally ecological context ecological context normally you can say that uh, 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 in the vickers framework policy is to be viewed as a process you know that process of placing a policy decision in a wide network of communication and ecological context so mostly these four contexts like mental activity institutional setting situational context and the ecological context it used to be a case study material so if in a brief you can say vickers framework is the process of examining policy decision in terms of uh, you can say that focusing first on these psychological dimension of policy and concluding the place uh, placing the decision in the ecological context and all like uh, these are the four things he has given and another one is that he also given the how to improve the policy making process in that first thing is that uh, you have to be develop the skills and the art of judgment art of judgment in the sense like where i'm judging your own things like in the judging means like that whether we have based upon the previous data you have to determine the uh, choose the best decision and the second one is that improvements in policy making analysis and the third is the stress on the system analysis and fourth is that it is a he said that uh, public policy making is a multivariate activity and all so vickers uh, model is mostly based upon that how to make the quick decision making based upon the your mental artifact and all so so far we have seen about the we are estonian model of public policy making and the vickers analysis of policy analysis in, in this we have seen that how you know that uh, how to arrive the decision or how to make the public policy will it will help to improve the process or you know that evaluating the policies and all in the next session we will discuss about the remaining models thank you thanks a lot Are you a fresh graduate? Do you want to fulfill your educational aspiration by pursuing higher education in various interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary areas like environmental science, 
environment and occupational health, philosophy, sustainability science, folklore and culture studies. If yes, the School of Interdisciplinary and Transdisciplinary Studies offers various program like master's program, graduate program, postgraduate diploma, certificate and appreciation program. The school offers five master's program, Master of Science, Environmental Science. The eligibility criteria for MSc Environmental Science is graduate in science, B.Tech, B.E., agriculture graduate, forestry graduate, and veterinary graduate. School also offers Masters in Environment and Occupational Health, Masters in Sustainability Science, Masters in Philosophy, and Masters in Folklore and Culture Studies. The eligibility criteria for these four master's program is graduate in any discipline. School also offers various socially relevant and need-based PG Diploma program like PG Diploma in Sustainability Science, PG Diploma in Environment and Occupational Health, PG Diploma in Folklore and Culture Studies, and PG Diploma in Migration and Diaspora Studies. The school also offers PG Certificate in Climate Change and Avshist Pravandan Me Pramar Patra. The school also offers two doctoral programs, PhD in Environmental Science and PhD in Interdisciplinary and Transdisciplinary Studies. The school offers various innovative technologies and multimedia for providing a very excellent student support system. The study material is of high quality. The learner support is provided through Gyan Darshan, Gyan Vani, IRC, Swayam Prabha and Swayam Channel of IGNU. For more detail, please log in to IGNU website. For online admission in these program, visit school site and also the summer online education portal of IGNU. So please join these program and fulfill your educational aspiration. नमस्ते प्रिय श्रोतागण आज बी एस के एस एक सौ पिचासी जो संस्कृत छंद और संगीत इसके अंतर्गत हम मैं डॉक्टर सोनिया और डॉक्टर आशीष चर्चा करेंगे संस्कृत छंद और संगीत के अंतर्गत संस्कृत छंदों के गायन की पद्धति तो गायन की पद्धति का महत्व क्या है इस विषय में डॉक्टर आशीष आज चर्चा करेंगे संस्कृत छंद यह शब्द सुनते ही सबसे पहले हमारे मस्तिष्क में क्या विचार आता है कई लोगों के मन में प्रश्न आ सकता है कि छंद इसकी क्या आवश्यकता है या छंदों का क्या महत्व है पद्य और गद्य में क्या भेद है तो इसी पे थोड़ा सा मैं आपको बताना चाहूँगा कि जब हम कोई भी मनुष्य की ये स्वभाव है कि हम राग के प्रति संगीत के प्रति म्यूजिक के प्रति लय के प्रति हमारा एक स्वाभाविक एक आकर्षण होता है इसीलिए आप देखेंगे कि गद्य की अपेक्षा पद्य हमें ज़्यादा रुचिकर लगता है और उसको हम गाने का प्रयास भी करते हैं तो कहीं ना कहीं छंद जो हैं वो यदि गायन की शैली में आप उसको समझने का प्रयास करेंगे तो आपको चीज़ों को लंबे समय तक याद रखने में आसानी होती है इसीलिए हम लोग आज आपको छंदों को संस्कृत छंदों को गान उसकी गायन की पद्धति को बताएंगे जिससे कि आप जो छंद हम चर्चा करेंगे उनको आप 
कैसे लंबे समय तक याद रखें और कैसे उनको गाकर आप स्वयं भी एक छंद का उदाहरण देंगे उस पर आधारित जितने भी छंद होंगे उन उस उन छंदों को आप उसी धुन में गाकर तैयार कर सकते हैं तो आज हम पहले छंद पर चर्चा करते हुए अब डॉक्टर सोनिया से मैं आवेदन निवेदन करूंगा कि वो पहले छंद पे के विषय में बताएं हाँ सी जी पहला छंद हम लेते हैं भुजंग प्रयात भुजंग प्रयात जो छंद है सबसे पहले आप यह जानते ही है कि छंदों में अक्षर गणना जब करते हैं तो तीन अक्षर मिलकर के एक गण बनता है उसमें यदि पहला अक्षर ह्रस्व है तो उसके ऊपर हम एक खड़ी रेखा आई और अगर अगला अक्षर दीर्घ है तो दीर्घ के लिए हम एस का चिन्ह लगाते हैं तो ये अक्षरों का कॉम्बिनेशन किस छंद में किस रूप में आता है ये उसके लक्षण से प्रतीत हो जाता है जैसे भुजंग प्रयात का लक्षण आप देखिए लिखा हुआ है भुजंग प्रयातम चतुर्भिर आप इसको ऐसा भी बोल सकते थे भुजंग प्रयातम चतुर्भिर यकारही परंतु इसमें थोड़ी सी धुन लाने से ये छंद का जो एक पहला ही पैरामीटर है कि छंद जो है जिसमें गायन हो तो ये धुन आने से उसको स्मरण रखना आसान हो जाता है इसी लक्षण पर आधारित हम उदाहरण लेते हैं जिसमें यह श्लोक सुना होगा आपने तो भुजंग प्रयात छंद को कैसे गाएंगे त्वेकम शरण्यम त्वेकम वरेण्यम त्वेकम जगत पालकम स्व प्रकाशम त्वेकम जगत कर्त्री पात्री प्रहंत्री त्वेकम परम निश्चलम निर्विकारम तो इस तरह से इन लक्षण के अंतर्गत लिखे हुए जितने भी श्लोक आपके सामने आएंगे इतनी सी धुन उसमें अगर हम सम्मिलित कर देते हैं वह स्मरण रखने में और मधुरता में सुंदरता में करने में हमारे लिए एक सहयोगी बनता है ऐसे ही अगर हम अगला छंद लेते हैं वसंत तिल का जिसका लक्षण है उक्ता वसंत तिल का तब जा जगऊ गह उसी धुन में जिस धुन में आप श्लोक गाएंगे लक्षण को उसी में ही याद करें और गाने की दूसरी एक तो उसमें अक्षरों की गिनती साथ में यति अर्थात विराम पॉज हमें कहा लेना है गाते हुए तो जैसे कि वसंत तिलका के लक्षण को जब गाया था उक्ता वसंत तिलका तब जऊ जग तो इसमें यति दो बार आई एक बार आठ अक्षर के बाद है और एक बार अंतिम जब छह अक्षर पूरे हो जाते हैं क्योंकि चौदह अक्षर हैं पूरी पहली एक पंक्ति में जैसे श्लोक को देखिए इस श्लोक में जहां कोमा लगा करके विराम दिखाया है वहां हम अपनी कोई भी धुन लेंगे वहां रुकेंगे जैसे प्रारभ्यते न खलु विघ्न भये न नीच ही प्रारभ्य विघ्न विहता विरमंती मध्य विघ्न ही पुनः पुनरपि प्रतिहन्य मान प्रारब्धम उत्तम जन न परित्यजंती तो इस तरह से इतने अक्षरों वाली पंक्तियों के जो भी श्लोक हमारे सामने हो उसमें एक हल्की सी धुन आप अपनी भी कोई नई लगा सकते हैं जो राग जानते हैं वो राग का प्रयोग करके भी इन छंदों को स्मरण करने के लिए एक मधुरता इसमें ला करके उनको दीर्घ काल तक स्मरण कर सकते हैं आगे है शिखरणी छंद आशीष जी इसके बारे में बताएंगे जी शिखरणी इसका छंद का लक्षण सबसे पहले आप देखिए रसई रुद्र छिन्ना य मन सब लागह शिखरिणी यह इस छंद का लक्षण है अर्थात जिस छंद में यथाक्रम यगण मगण नगण सगण भगण और एक लघु और एक गुरु अक्षर हो तो उसे शिखरिणी छंद कहते हैं और जहां तक यति का प्रश्न है आप देखिए इसमें रसई रुद्र छिन्ना इस लक्षण के अंदर ही दो शब्द हैं एक है रस और एक है रुद्र तो रस कितने हमारे संस्कृत साहित्य में हमारे या सामान्य जगत में आठ छह प्रकार के हमारे रस हैं तो यानी कि पहली यति हमें छह पर लेनी है और रुद्र कितने माने गए हैं ग्यारह तो दूसरी जो यति है वो हमें ग्यारह पर लेनी है तो यानी कि पहला जो विराम जिसके जिसको क्योंकि आप एक ही साथ ग्यारह और छह सत्रह आप वर्णों को एक साथ आप नहीं गा सकते आपको कहीं ना कहीं बीच में एक विराम की एक श्वास विराम की आवश्यकता आपको पड़ती है इसलिए आप पहली सांस जो है वो छह अक्षरों के बाद लीजिए और दूसरी सांस आप ग्यारह अक्षरों के बाद लीजिए तो इस इसमें एक तो श्वास की बात हो गई और रसई रुद्र छिन्ना यमन सब लागा शिकरणी इसका लक्षण भी आपको बता दिया गया अब 
कौन सी धुन ऐसी हो या किस धुन के माध्यम से हम शिखरणी छंद के लक्षणों को या शिखरणी छंद के उदाहरणों को हम याद रख सके तो उसको एक उदाहरण के माध्यम से आप सभी के समक्ष रखने का प्रयास करते हैं तो उदाहरण देखिए ये अभिज्ञान शाकुंदलम का श्लोक है इसको हम गाकर आपके सामने प्रस्तुत कर रहे हैं और इसमें आप यति भी देखिएगा कि मैं यति कहां ले रहा हूं छह के बाद पहली तो आप इस चीज को नोटिस कीजिएगा अनाघ्रात पुष्प किसलय मलूनम करुहै रना विधम रत्नम मधु नव मना स्वादित रसम अखंडम पुण्याना फलम च तद्रूपम नघम न जाने भोक्तारम कमी समुपस्थाति विधि तो आपने देखा कि यहां पर पहले छह अक्षरों के बाद एक श्वास का अल्प विराम लिया गया यानी कि यति ली गई और दूसरी ग्यारहवें अक्षर के बाद जो मैंने आपको पहले ही बताया कि रस हमारे छह हैं और ग्यारह रुद्र हैं छह और ग्यारह इस प्रकार आप इस धुन में शिखरणी छंद के उदाहरणों को श्लोकों को आप याद कर सकते हैं बिल्कुल आशीष जी बहुत ही आपने सुंदर एक राग में प्रस्तुति के माध्यम से शिखरणी छंद को बताया अग्रिम हम एक छंद और लेते हैं जो है शार्दुल विक्रेडित जी सबसे पहले शार्दुल विक्रेडित छंद का जो लक्षण है उसको एक सूर्याश्वर यदि मह सजो सतत अगाह ऐसे लिखा हुआ है इसी छंद में अगर हम थोड़ी सी धुन मिला करके उसको गाते हैं तो उस लक्षण भी स्मरण रहता है और इस पर आधारित लिखा हुआ उदाहरण भी जैसे सूर्याश्वर यदि मह सजऊ सतत गाह शार्दूल विक्रीडितम तो ये लक्षण है इसमें यति भी बताई है लक्षण में कि कहा रुकना है कहा सूर्य अश्व सूर्य बारह आदित्य माने जाते हैं तो ये सूत्र लिखने की शैली है भारतीय ऋषियों की कि वह सूत्र को या लक्षण को संक्षिप्त और एक रुचिकर बनाते हैं तो संख्या सीधी न लिख करके बारह न लिख करके प्रयोग किया सूर्य अर्थात तो वो बारह का प्रतीक है अश्व सात घोड़े सूर्य की सात किरणे तो अश्व प्रतीक है सात संख्या का तो हम पहला जो विराम लेंगे इस लक्षण पर आधारित लिखे हुए श्लोक में वो बारह पंक्तियों पर होगा दूसरा विराम अश्व अर्थात सात पर होगा तो देखते हैं एक उदाहरण जिसके अंतर्गत ये जो शार्दुल विक्रेडित छंद है अभिज्ञान शाकुंतल वही जब शकुंतला की विदाई हो रही है उस समय ऋषि यह श्लोक बोलते हैं तो इसको याद करने का प्रकार कैसा हो सकता है शुश्रूष स्व गुरु कुरु प्रिय सखी वृत्ति सपत्नी जने भर्तुर्वि प्रकृता पीरोषण तया मास्म प्रतीपंगम भूयेष्ठम भव दक्षिण परिजने भाग्येश्वनुत्सेकिनी यांतेवं गृहिणी पदम युवत वाकुल सैधय आप कोई और भी अपनी लय निकाल सकते हैं पर वहां ध्यान यही रखना है पहला विराम हम लेंगे बारह के बाद जैसे इसी में था ना शुश्रूषस्व गुरु कुरु प्रिय सखी यहाँ बारह हुए आप कोई भी धुन कोई भी तर्ज किसी भी राग तो पोज जो होगा फर्स्ट सखी के बाद होगा दूसरी पंक्ति में रोशन तया वहां बारह हुए हैं तो वहां हमने अल्प विराम लिया पूर्ण विराम जहां है वहां सात हो जाते हैं तो उनको ऐसे गिन करके ये छंदो की एक गायन पद्धति है अगला हम लेते हैं मंदा क्रांता इसके विषय में सुनेंगे हम आशीष सर से जी मंदा क्रांता इस छंद का लक्षण आप सभी के सामने प्रस्तुत है मंदा क्रांताम बुधि रस नगैर मो भनऊ तउ ग युग्मम अर्थात जिस श्लोक के प्रत्येक चरण में क्रमशः मगण भगण नगण तगण दो बार और अंत में गुरु अक्षर हो उसे मंदा क्रांता छंद कहते हैं और इसमें जो यति है वो तीन जगह पर है सबसे पहले चार अक्षरों के बाद 
उसके बाद छे के बाद और उसके बाद सात के बाद तो जैसे इसमें मंदा क्रांताम्बुदी तो अम्बुधि जो शब्द है उस वो चार है उसका अर्थ है चार और रस जैसे आपको पहले बताया छ और नग सात सात प्रकार के जो नाग माने गए हैं या नग माने गए हैं उसको सात की संख्या उसकी मानी जाती है तो चार छ और सात इस प्रकार आपको यति लेनी है ये थोड़ा सा लंबा श्लोक है उसमें सत्रह क्योंकि आप देख रहे हैं अक्षर चार छ और सात इस प्रकार कुल मिला एक ही पंक्ति में सत्रह वर्ण या अक्षर हमें प्राप्त होते हैं तो इसको गाना भी थोड़ा सा मतलब नए मतलब मैं ये नहीं कहूंगा कि मुश्किल है लेकिन इसमें थोड़ा सा ज्यादा आपको परिश्रम या एक एक अलग प्रकार की मेहनत की इसमें आपको आवश्यकता पड़ती है लेकिन इसको लंबे उसमें जब पंक्ति होती है उसमें गाने का स्कोप भी बढ़ जाता है ज्यादा छोटा श्लोक होगा तो उसमें गाने का स्कोप कम होगा लेकिन जब लंबी पंक्ति होगी तो उसमें राग को बिठाने की या म्यूजिक अधिक से अधिक देने की संभावना उसमें ज्यादा बढ़ जाती है आपको पता है कि कालिदास का जो मेघदूत है वो पूरा का पूरा मंदा क्रांता छंद में ही लिखा गया है जिसके दो भाग पूर्व मेघ और उत्तर मेघ हम सभी जानते हैं तो उसी उत्तर मेघ का एक श्लोक जो कि बहुत ही सुंदर और प्रसिद्ध श्लोक है उसको मैं आपको जो मंदा क्रांता छंद का लक्ष्य उदाहरण है उसको आपके सभी के समक्ष में प्रस्तुत करने का प्रयास करूंगा आप यति को जरा ध्यान से सुनने का और समझने का प्रयास कीजिएगा चार छ और सात पर है ठीक है तो आप देखिएगा तन्वी श्यामा शेखरी दशना पक्व बिंबा धरोष्ठी मध्य क्षामा चकित हरिणी प्रेक्षण निम्न नाभि श्रोणी भारादलसगमना स्तोक नम्र स्तनाभ्यात्र सद युवती विषय सृष्टिराधातु तो आप लोगों ने देखा कि कैसे पहला तन्वी श्यामा चार पे शीख हरि दशना छे पर पक्व बिंबाध रोष्ठी सात पर आप चाहे तो वर्ण सात सात आप गिन सकते हैं मध्य क्षामा मा या क्षामा चार अक्षर हुए चकेत तीन हरिणी में तीन छ प्रेक्षणा में तीन और निम्न नाभि में चार सात यानी कि चार छ और सात इस प्रकार हमने इस पे यति ली तो बड़ा ही आसान हो जाता है इस लंबे छंद को गाना क्योंकि हमें यति की समझ है हमें संगीत की समझ है हमें राग की समझ है और इसी धुन में आप मंदा क्रांता पूरा मेघदूत आप इसको इस आप धुन में आप याद कर सकते हैं एक और उदाहरण में मेघदूत क्योंकि बहुत ही प्रसिद्ध ग्रंथ है इसका एक उदाहरण मैं आपके सामने और रखना चाहूंगा और आपको चाहूंगा कि आप सभी लोग इस धुन में पूरे के पूरे मेघदूत को याद करने का प्रयास करें तो दूसरा श्लोक हम मंदा क्रांता छंद का ही देखते हैं ताम जानी था परिमित कथा जीवित मेद्वितीय दूरी भूते मई सहचरे चक्रवाकी में वै काम गाढ़ोत्कंठा गुरु सुदेव से शु जाता मे शिशिर मथिता पद्मिनी वान्य रूपा तो इस धुन में आप देखिए मंदा क्रांता का कोई भी श्लोक हो आप बड़ी सरलता से यति के साथ आप आराम से सहजता से पूरे के पूरे मेघदूत को मंदा क्रांता छंदों के उदाहरणों को आप याद कर सकते हैं अब चलते हैं अगले छंद पर अगले पर जाने से पहले आशीष जी मैंने ये देखा कि आप का ये संगीत इसमें जब बहुत अच्छा एक लय बद्धता या उस संगीत की हम गहराई को जानते हैं उसका प्रयोग इन संस्कृत के छंदों में कर सकते हैं मेरे जैसे जो बहुत अच्छा संगीत नहीं जानते उनके लिए भी एक इस मंदा क्रांता छंद को गाने के लिए एक अच्छी तर्ज या धुन हो सकती जी, है जी, बिल्कुल आप जैसे जो नहीं है असहायों के लिए भी कोई ना कोई रास्ता बनता ही है <laughs> तो उसमें जैसे मंदा क्रांता का लक्षण है मंदा क्रांता मभन तत गा दिशा राग द्वीपा तो अब इस लक्षण पर उसी छंद को देखिए जो आशीष जी ने गाया राग से युक्त अब इसको एक सामान्य तन्वी श्यामा शिखरी दशना पक्व बिंबा धरोष्ठी 
मध्ये क्षामा चकित हरिणी प्रेक्षणा निम्ननाभि नाभि श्रोणी भारा दल सगमना स्तोकनम रास्तनाभ्याम यात्र सुवती विषय सृष्टिराधातु तो मेरे में भी यति वही रही बिल्कुल जो कि लक्षण के अंदर थी कि जहाँ पर हमें पहले चार पर तो तनवी श्यामा वहां रुके बिल्कुल फिर था आगे शिखरी दशना उसके बाद रुके आपने जो संगीत में एक इसकी तर्ज धुन बताई उसमें भी यति वही रही थी और जो एक सामान्य स्तर पर भी उसमें एक हल्का सा लयात्मकता लाते हैं तब भी यति का हमें विशेष रूप से ध्यान रखना और चाहिए आपकी बात से मुझे याद आया कि जैसे हमें मान लीजिए क्योंकि ये धुन जो है वो थोड़ी सी टाइम टेकिंग है इसमें आपको लंबा समय देना पड़ रहा है एक ही श्लोक पर लेकिन यदि हमें मेघदूत याद करना है या हमें मंदा का अंदा छंद के बहुत सारे उदाहरण याद करने हैं जिसमें हमें समय कम है और हमें जल्द जल्द याद करना है क्योंकि हम ग्रंथ में इतना लंबा लंबा गा के शायद हम याद ना कर पाए कुछ श्लोक तो याद कर लेंगे पांच दस लेकिन पूरा ग्रंथ याद करना थोड़ा मुश्किल हो सकता है तो एक धुन और मैं आपके सामने जो आपने बताया उसी प्रकार की है जैसे मेघदूत का पहला ही श्लोक है कश्चित कांता विरह गुरुणा स्वाधिकारा प्रमत्त शापे नास्तंगमित महिमा वर्ष भोग्य न भरतु यश्चक्रे जनक तनया स्नान पुण्य उदकेशु स्निग्धाया तरुषु वसती राम गिर आश्रमेशु तो आप इस धुन में भी धड़ाधड़ धड़ाधड़ आप श्लोक याद कर सकते हैं मंदाक्रांता के तो आप इस धुन का भी आप प्रयोग कर सकते हैं इसके बाद है उपजाति हमारा अगला छंद इसका लक्षण आपके सामने सभी के समक्ष प्रस्तुत है उपेंद्र वज्रा जत जास तो अर्थात जिस छंद में कोई चरण तो जो इंद्र वज्रा का हो या यानी कि इंद्र वज्रा छंद का हो और कोई उपेंद्र वज्रा छंद का हो तो उन दोनों के मिक्सर को उपजाति छंद कहते हैं तो इंद्र वज्रा में भी ग्यारह वर्ण होते हैं और उपेंद्र वज्रा में भी ग्यारह होते हैं दोनों और उपजाति में भी ग्यारह ही होंगे क्योंकि दोनों का वो मिक्सर है उसकी एक पंक्ति में इंद्र वज्रा जो छंद का लक्षण है वो घटित हो रहा होता है और दूसरे के में उपेंद्र वज्रा छंद का लक्षण घटित हो रहा होता है तो इसका उदाहरण जो बहुत ही ये भी बहुत ही प्रसिद्ध श्लोक है कालिदास क्योंकि हमारे यहाँ संस्कृत साहित्य में अधिकांश उन्होंने इतने सुंदर सुंदर महाकाव्यों की और खंड काव्यों की रचना की तो उन्हीं के एक महाकाव्य का रघुवंश महाकाव्य का एक श्लोक जो कि उपजाति छंद में हमें प्राप्त होता है वो आप सभी के सामने मैं प्रस्तुत करने जा रहा हूँ इसको भी मैं एक धुन हमने बनाई है इसको गाने का प्रयास करते हैं और आप भी उपजाति के उदाहरणों को इस धुन में आप गाकर याद कर सकते हैं जैसे है संचारिणी दीप शिखे वरात्र यम यम व्यति पति वरा सा नरेंद्र मार्गाट इव प्रपेदे वे वर्ण भाव सस भूमि पाल तो उपजाति के और उदाहरणों को भी आप इस छंद में यदि गाने का प्रयास करेंगे तो आपको बड़ी सरलता से अनेक श्लोक आप बड़े आराम से आप याद कर सकते हैं बिल्कुल आशीष जी उपजाति छंद जैसे हम प्रतिदिन की अपनी पूजा इत्यादि में भी गाते त्वमे व माता ये जो श्लोक है ये भी उपेंद्र वज्रा जिसके लक्षण उपजाति से संबंधित होते हैं उसी में ही लिखा हुआ है उसको भी हम जैसे आप स्मरण ही होगा ये उससे पहले एक श्लोक और लेते हैं इसका नीति शतक वैराग्य शतक भरतरी हरि का भोगान भुक्ता वयमे वोक्तापोन वयमे वप्ता कालो न याता वयमे वृष्णा जीर्ण वयमे वजीर्ण बंधु सखा विद्या द्रविण मम देव देव तमेव मम देव देव 
तो ये उपजाति का है इसको अलग तरह से भी त्वमेव माता च पिता त्वमेव त्वमेव विद्या द्रविणम त्वमेव त्वमेव बंधुश्च सखा त्वमेव त्वमेव सर्व मम देव देव तो ये छंद के जो लक्षण उन लक्षणों के आधार पर श्लोकों को याद करने की एक पद्धति है क्योंकि जैसा कि हम जिस पाठ्यक्रम के अंतर्गत भी इन श्लोकों को गाने की आज पद्धति सीख रहे हैं वह हमारा कौशल आधारित है स्किल जो हमें संस्कृत में लिखे हुए हर एक पंक्ति के उच्चारण का बोलने का एक प्रकार है ऐसे ही नहीं किसी भी जैसे मंत्रों को बोलने का एक प्रकार अलग रहता है श्लोकों को बोलने का प्रकार अलग रहता है गद्य को पढ़ने का एक शैली है सेम ऐसे ही जैसे आप इंग्लिश के हाइकू ले जैपनीज जो लिखे हुए हाइकू हैं या कविताएं हिंदी की जो है तुकबंदी उसमें अलग अलग प्रकार से गाते हैं उसी तरह हम समझ सकते हैं कि यह संस्कृत के श्लोक भी उसी आधार पर उन्हीं वैज्ञानिक तरीकों के साथ लिखे हुए हैं अगला हम मालिनी छंद आशीष जी से सुनेंगे जी मालिनी छंद इसका लक्षण सबसे पहले हम लोग देखते हैं न न म या या युते यम मालिनी भोगी लोक ही अर्थात जिस छंद में दो नगण एक मगण और अंत में दो यगण हो उसे मालिनी नामक छंद कहते हैं इसमें पंद्रह वर्ण होते हैं और जो यति है वो पहले आठवें पे और दूसरी सातवें वर्ण पर होती है आठ और सात पंद्रह ठीक है तो इसमें भी हमें इसका एक बार उदाहरण देखेंगे ना ना उदाहरण आप एक बार लेके आइएगा तो इसका उदाहरण है सरसी जम मनुविधम शैवली नापी रम्यम मलिनमी हिमांशो लक्ष्म लक्ष्मी तनोती इधिक मनोज्ञा वलकलेना तन्वी किमी वि मधुरा मंडनम नाकृतीना आपने इसको उदाहरण में देखा कि सर सिजम मनुविधम कितने अक्षर हुए आठ शैवले नापी रम्यम कितने हुए सात तो पहला यदि हमने आठ पे ली दूसरी सात पर ली मलिनम अपी हिमांशोर आप सात सात गिनते रहिए आठ लक्ष्म लक्ष्मी तनोती सात तो आठ सात आठ सात आठ सात ऐसे करते करते आपको दो बार इसमें मौका मिलेगा यति लेने का और बहुत ही सुंदर ये भी कालिदास का श्लोक है अभिज्ञान शकुंदम का इस इस धुन में आप मालिनी छंद के जितने भी उदाहरण हैं उसको आप याद करने का प्रयास कीजिए और लंबे समय तक उसको याद अपनी अपनी स्मृति में उनको बनाए रखिए ऐसे ही एक मालिनी छंद काशी जी और मेरे जैसे जो कम संगीत जानते हैं उनके लिए उदाहरण अगर हम देखें तो मालिनी छंद का लक्षण जैसा बताया ननमय युतेयम मालिनी भोगी लोक ही ये लक्षण है इस लक्षण आधारित वही श्लोक अगर हम देखें जिसमें यति का प्रयोग है सरसी जन अनुविधम शैवले नापी रम्यम मलिनम अमांशोर लक्ष्म लक्ष्मी तनोती इम अधिक मनोज्या वलकले नापी तन्वी किमी वि मधुराणा मंडनम नाकृति नाम तो जैसे आपने कहा कि पहली जो यति है विधम के बाद तो इसमें भी वहीं पर ही रुके थे कि सरसी ज मनुविधम शैवले नापी रम्यम तो छंद को गाने का जो प्रकार अगर हमारे सामने यति को पता है हमें तो हम अपने श्रोतागण को बता सकते हैं उस लक्षण के माध्यम से हम यति को जाने पहले तो उस आधारित लिखे हुए श्लोकों को हम गा सकते हैं और उनको स्मरण रख सकते हैं तो ये जो संस्कृत के छंदों के आज हमने कुछ छह सात छंदों के उदाहरण से उनकी गायन पद्धति को देखा उनमें भी यति का प्रयोग किस रूप में करना है इस आधारित जो छंद है उनको गाने का एक दो दो प्रकार लगभग देखे हैं आगे की इन चर्चाओं में हम इन्हीं छंदों पर आधारित या अन्य जैसे कि स्रग धरा है 
और भुजंग प्रयाग्त है हरिणी है बहुत सारे छंद हैं संस्कृत साहित्य जिनमें लिखा हुआ है आप कोई भी विषय चाहे विज्ञान उठाइए खगोल उठाए गणित लें सभी जितने भी संस्कृत साहित्य में मिला हुआ जो शोध है ऋषियों ने उनको श्लोक बद्ध करके ही ग्रंथों में लिखा है उसके पीछे कारण है कि चीजें याद करने में जिसमें आसानी हो हम मैथमेटिक्स के फॉर्मूला कितने ही लंबे कोटेशन में या एक कहे उसमें याद करते हैं जब प्रोज में तो स्मरण रखना मुश्किल रहता मुश्किल। भूल जाते हैं बच्चे वही आप उनको बचपन में छोटी छोटी कविताओं के माध्यम से या श्लोक लय प्रदान, करके।, ले प्रदान करके करते हैं तो वह है हमें अपने आजीवन स्मरण रहती है तो इन्ही संस्कृत के छंदों की गायन पद्धति की वैशिष्ट के साथ हम आपसे फिर मिलेंगे धन्यवाद धन्यवाद A warm welcome to Igno. If you are creative, if you can write well, and if you can visualize, mass communication is the correct career option for you. I am going to talk about postgraduate diploma in journalism and mass communication, which is also the first year of MA program in journalism and mass communication. So any learner who has done a postgraduate diploma in journalism and mass communication is eligible to take admission straight away into the second year of our master's program in journalism and mass communication. Duration to complete this program is minimum one year, and because we have this inherent flexibility in distance education system, you can take up to three years to complete this program. The minimum eligibility criteria for taking admission in this program is bachelor's in any discipline. To give you a glimpse of what are the various components of this program, we begin with telling you what mass communication is, what are the various areas, various branches of mass communication. Then we go on to tell you about the various reporting techniques and beats of reporting, followed by media ethics, the principles, the codes of conduct that you must follow. And we also focus on the writing skills and editing skills for print media. Now this program comprises of eight courses of four credits each. 25% of the entire program is practical based. So we have six theory courses and two practical courses. This program is so designed so that it will be able to make you more employable in the market. So it helps you build a career in print media, in radio, television, new media, as well as the allied subjects of mass communication, which could be media marketing, advertising, public relations and corporate communications, event management. This can also help you become an entrepreneur in areas like photography or having your own production house and so on. So I hope that you will be excited to join this program and we will be waiting to welcome you here in IGNO. Welcome to all. The development of children and the various perspectives that is revolving around it, it is very much interesting. No one can explain the development of a child 
based on one perspective. Different perspectives in child development resulted in a proper development of a child. In today's session, we are going to discuss about the bioecological perspective of child development and its educational implications. And in this session, the learning outcomes will be that to develop understanding about the bioecological perspective in child development, to classify the layers of environment that affect child's development, to examine how each layer affects the development of a child, to identify the educational implications of bioecological perspectives. Let us start with the discussion, what is the center for the developmental process? So in bioecological perspective, the center for the developmental process is the child. So there is a context for development and the child is at the center for the developmental process. Why this perspective is known as bioecological? Because from the term itself, we can understand that there is the influence of biology and ecology. And this perspective, it was put forward by Prof. Brenner. And he stated that there are different layers which exert influence upon the development of a child. Or in another way, we can say that the interplay between the context and the child is taking place very much interactively. So here we can see that Yuri Brenner, who was the expounder of this bioecological perspective, stated that there are concentric circles model of human development. And in this developmental process, the child is at the center and the context of development, it radiates from the individual child's experience in proximal to distal order. And here, in the Brenner's bioecological perspective, what is important is the socialization which is taking place in various contexts. In all the socialization contexts, the child is in the center. So the socialization process takes place with the child and how it is influencing the developmental process. We can see that the child is born in a family and from the family the influence of the child or the interaction of the child is going outside. So here in the bioecological perspective, Yuri Brenner stated about different layers and these layers they are related with each other. We can see the layers can be classified as microsystem, mesosystem, exosystem, and macrosystem, and chronosystem. So let us have a little bit discussion on these different layers. And here, when we look at the microsystem, we know that the term micro means small. And here, the beginning of the influence of the child is the family. So the examples of microsystem, the family, the immediate neighbors, the siblings, all this comes under the microsystem. And in many cases, we can see that there may not be the parents for some cases, there will be other caregivers. So how they are influencing the child, how they are nurturing the child, that is important. So the nature will give the child, the way the, how the child behaves, it is decided by the nurturing setup. That is an important thing. So here in the microsystem, we can see that the child when born or in the womb itself, the child is imbibing the ideas of the parent, mother, especially the mother. 
Then when it comes out, we can see that it is influenced by the parents, the siblings, the immediate neighbors. So here, when we think of the microsystem, we can see that there are a lot of contexts where the child gets influenced by. There is family, there is health services, school, daycare, neighborhood play area, peers, religious institutions. So all these constitute the elements of the or the constituents of the microsystem. Let us take the example of the family structure. We can see that even the family structure is changing its pattern. From the traditional family, we have moved towards the non-traditional family. So from the picture itself, we can see that there is a single parent family where the father may be away in search of job or we can say that the commuted family is there and then there is the nuclear family structure and then we can see there are children who are nurturing in difficult context like the context may be the poverty, the low socioeconomic status, the war zones. So all this context exerts some kind of influence upon the developmental pattern of the child. So we cannot say that all the children that comes in the classroom are having the same experiences. The experiences are different. So here, how the child is nurtured, that is an important thing. Then the joint family system, it has gone. So we can see that nowadays there is the cohabitant family structure there where before marriage itself, the living together is starting. So all these type of family structures exerts, sometimes exert positive effects, sometimes negative effects. So these family structures has a new connotation where we have discussed the different types of family structures. And here we can see that the interaction within the microsystem typically involve personal relationships with family members, classmates, teachers and caregivers. So how these groups or individuals interact with the children will affect how they grow. And more than that, we can see that similarly how children react to people in their microsystem. So the action as well as the reaction is important and more nurturing and more supportive interactions and relationships will understandably foster children's improved development. So we may think that the child should get the positive environment. So for getting the positive environment within the home, take the case of the metropolitan cities where there is not enough space for the children to play. Where the playground is one kind of context where the children are getting some positive experiences and some experiences where they want to avoid also. So here within the home itself, Within the four walls, what kind of experiences the child is getting? They may not be always positive if the family members are not adjusting. So here the interaction, how the action as well as the reactions, that depends upon the way the child is nurturing. Suppose the child might be playing on the play playground they might have entered into conflict or some kind of disagreement with other children and one child beat another child. So how the other child react? Whether they are going to learn about how to fight with each other? So whether that type of environment is creating. So how to react is also important in any circumstances. So next system, that is the meso system where we can describe the mesosystem which contains the relationship between the microsystems. 
the mesosystem encompasses the interaction of the different microsystems which children find themselves in. It is in essence a system of microsystems and involves linkages between home and school, between peer group and family and between family and community. So we can see that there are different systems, microsystems where the relationship is taking place in the mesosystem. As discussed, take the case of the children in the playground. There the microsystems where we can see the family nurturing setup, then the peer group interactions, how the peer group is interacting or the, how the community relationship is taking place. This is important in the mesosystem. So this mesosystem is also an important context where the child is coming up. That's why Yuri Brenner used the term the nested influence of the various layers of the growing up of the child is important. And next one when we see that when a child, parent, they are actively involved in the friendship of their child. We know that children might be becoming, befriending with the different kinds of uh, children so that they might have inviting them to their house where how the parents are interacting with the child. If the parents are able to interacting in a positive way, then the positive influence will be there. If the parents are disliking the friends, then the negative influence will be there. So we have seen the two layers where the interaction is taking place or the influence is taking place upon the child. That is the microsystem and the mesosystem. Coming to the next aspect, in the mesosystem, we can see that the neighborhood as a context of child development. Nowadays, we have to give importance for the neighborhoods. The neighborhoods and schools are the two contexts in which children spend vast amounts of their time for making friends, forming opinions and attitudes, and learning social and academic skills that help them to lead their daily life. So here, we know that the in a metropolitan setup, what is having? The space is not there for the parking, children's park. So another thing, what is there? The child may be interacting with the, in the family members and with the immediate neighbors. So how the neighborhood influence? So this neighborhood area also gives some kind of understandings about the children that are residing there. If the neighborhood area is providing good play facilities for the child or good resources for the child, there we can see the positive influences. So we will say that when we look at the friends, we can understand what type of ch a child is. That is the general notion that we have set up, made up in our mind. So this neighborhood area also gives some kind of understanding about the growing up context of children in that particular area. If the neighborhood area is belongs to the low socioeconomic status, there the social interaction may not be always in a positive way. There the children has to develop some kind of resilience to grow up in such socio-economic status. So we can say that the quality and quantity of the neighborhood and the diversity that exerts in the neighborhood, it gives some kind of understanding about the recreational, social, educational, health, transport and employment services in the community. So all these things affect the developmental outcomes of the children. So the neighborhood socioeconomic disadvantage has a negative impact on the growing up context of the child. And we can see that the quality of the area, the home environment, when it's a kind of colony type, what type of 
influence is happening is that the environmental influences may be in a negative way. So that's why we are always concentrating not only the family setup, the neighborhood is also an important factor that exerts greater influence on the development of the child. So from the neighborhood, some kind of social processes is also imbibed by the child. How to behave with the elders, how to behave with the peers, or how to behave with the immediate neighbors. All these a kind of social process is developing among the child. And the neighborhood socio-economic composition also affect the quantity and quality of the life of the child. And in the meso system itself, we can see the school as a context of child development. So what the school is delivering, that is acquisition of the knowledge and skills. Then the socio-emotional development is taking place in the school environment. Then children's daily experiences at school affect their behavior, beliefs and well-being. So all these have a cumulative effect upon the growing up aspect of the children. So here we have explained about the two systems, the microsystem and the mesosystem. Then comes the exosystem. So the exosystem, it pertains to the linkages that may exist between two or more settings one of which may not contain the developing children, not, but it affects them indirectly. So we can see that the exosystem, it has an indirect influence on the growing pattern of the child. Suppose when we take the case of the parent's working place, if the working conditions is not good, for example, in a particular day, the parents' experiences are bad. With that experiences, they are coming home so that it indirectly affects the child. So the scolding may be given upon the child. So it indirectly affects the child. So the exosystem also exerts an important influence. In the exosystem, we can see that the media, when we take media as a context of development, how it affects there, I wish to quote American Academy of Pediatrics Council on Communications and Media that because children have high levels of exposure, media have greater access and time to shape young people's attitudes and actions than do parents or teachers, replacing them as educators, role models and the primary sources of information about the world and how one behaves in it. So here we can see the media as a context of development exerts positive as well as negative effects. So children in the 21st century learn and develop in the context of electronic media. Hence we call them as the digital kids, increasing use of all kinds of media creation and use of media designed for children aged 2 and under. So there are different kinds of the digital spaces for the kids to engage themselves. So this engagement, it may affect positively an excessive use of the media, it affects negatively. And we know that nowadays the inactiveness of the children is increasing, sitting in front of the media and sitting for a long time which leads the child eating too much so that it leads to obesity. So there are some kind of negative outcomes that we can see when excessive involvement is kept apart for the media space. And media as a context of development, we can see that there are positive aspects where multitasking in which more than one medium is used at a time, such as texting on a cell phone while watching creation. And use of media platforms such as smartphone are digital, interactive and easily transportable. So different researchers have taken place and they have come out with the positive as well as the negative outcomes. So how do we use all these contexts? It depends upon 
the number of hours that we are spending and how we use each type of media space that is becoming important. Here comes an important question that how do media use affects children's cognitive development. Expert games, gamers are faster than novices at deploying attentional skills and can transfer those attentional skills to other tasks. So already I have discussed about the multitasking which is one kind of the positive thing and then for this multitasking they have to divide their attention. So divided attention is becoming an important aspect and the children learn how to divide the attention. Sometimes engaged in numerous multitasking process where we can see there the children may not be able to attend even at a single task so that no task can be able to complete in a successful manner. That is also there. And another uh, positive effect that the spatial skills they are developing. The spatial skills also improve when children play video games that require visualization of spatial fields. So the majority of the games we can see what space they have to use, in which direction they have to go. So the speed, the spatial skills, then the visualization capacity of the child and the multitasking, it is increasing a lot. So we can see that though there are different contexts of development, how it exerts the influence is very much important. Then coming to the macro system, where we know that the term macro means the large, it is the largest and most distant collection of people and places to the children that still have significant influence on them. Thus, ecological system is composed of the children's cultural patterns and values, especially their dominant beliefs, ideas, economic system, political system, and in this case, for example, children in the war zone areas will experience a different kind of development than children in peaceful environment. So in this discussion, we can see that in the war zone, the children are always listening to shooting of the gun. So the terrorist at attack and the stress. So it creates a different type of mood and the developmental swings in the mind of the child. Then comes the next system that is the chrono system. So all the earlier developmental context has a time concept. So here the chrono system adds the dimension of time which demonstrates the influence of both change and cons consistency and constancy in children's environment. The chrono system, it may include change in family structure, parents' employment status, as well as immense society change such as economic cycles and wars. So from the figure, you can see that the child, when they are developing, we can see that the diversity of the interrelated influences that exerts greater pressure on the development of the child. For example, the socio-economic status, how when it is a good socio-economic status, it affects positively. If it is low, it affects negatively. If the parents are divorced, this will affect the developmental pattern of the child. So there is a time pattern where the achievement level of the child may be reducing or the child may not be behaving properly at some point of or at certain age. Generally, the parents are complaining about the adolescent stage where the children are not behaving properly. So, there occurs the biological changes, the mood swings and the emotional changes. So, what are the educational implications that we should highlight here based on this Brennan's ecological perspective is that how do we prepare teachers and educational leaders to facilitate an inclusive classroom? As the today's notion is the inclusive setup, so how do we prepare teachers and educational leaders? 
understand the background of each learner, understand student learning needs and styles, teach new concepts by using student vocabulary and integrate diverse study practices, culturally responsive pedagogy. The teacher plays a major role in determining the meaning and sensitivity in the classroom. So here what type of teacher training we have to give in the diverse context. The culturally responsive training is very much important. The multicultural training, education, that type of training is important. So we have seen the different layers of the Brennan's bioecological model where it consists of different systems such as microsystem, the mesosystem, the exosystem, the macrosystem and the chronosystem and how each layer is influencing the child positively and negatively and what are the educational implications of bioecological perspective in child development. Thank you.